So far, we've discussed how surface currents are moving energy from place to place, but, I mean, what does that really mean for climate? Well, if you think about it, cold surface currents should make areas colder than they normally would be without the ocean biome. And then the same thing with warm ocean currents, they might make places a little bit warmer than normal. These are examples of heat sources or heat sinks. Now, warmer surface currents bring heat, meaning they're a source of heat, to higher latitudes, and cooler currents take away heat. It's kind of like a, a faucet drain. Okay, it drains the heat like a sink. And that's doing that to lower latitude lo locations. Also, when water changes from liquid to gas or vice versa, energy is gained or lost, uh, which is also going to impact the temperature or the climate. You can kind of think about this thing called latent heat. It's kind of weird to think about. Energy gained or lost when water changes state. You experience this anytime you take a shower. So when you get out of the shower and you still have a little bit of water on your skin, that water is going to evaporate and you know the instant you get out of the shower it starts evaporating and what do you feel? Well, you feel cold. And the reason why you feel cold is because uh, it takes energy, so energy is lost from your body to evaporate that water. Okay? Same things happening to the air temperature when you have evaporation or condensation. Let's get into some examples of, of what I mean. So the California current is one of those heat sinks, losing heat, it's getting drained out. Cool surface water from the Arctic, right here we have Arctic water up you know, by Canada, Antarctica, um, moves south along the coast of North America. You can kind of see it here and get all these eddies and all this crazy cool stuff over here. This cold ocean water cools the air above it, creating cooler than normal temperatures or conditions for people, you know, in right here, San Francisco. Um, now, have you ever noticed that surfers in California wear wetsuits, where surfers in Florida or surfers in Hawaii don't? Well, the whole reason why surfers in California have to wear wetsuits is because of this cold uh, California current coming from uh, the northern latitudes. Okay, so take a look at the diagram. You've seen this before. What I want you guys to do is pause the video over on the right hand side. I want you to write down the two letters from Lane Cow that impact uh, these cities, both you know on the coast and inland. The kind of two that I was thinking of was the C for continental location and the O for ocean currents. Uh, hopefully you guys kind of said the same thing that I did. Uh, if not, rewatch this part of the video. It should make a little bit more sense. Now, what I want you to do is uh, we're going to take a look at um, one of those warm ocean currents and the impact it might have on climate. So we're going to compare places in Canada like Halifax, uh, which is right here, to... Places in Europe, cities in Europe, slightly higher latitude, like London, Amsterdam, Warsaw, um, almost the, the exact same latitude. However, they have very, very different climates. I would like you guys to study the average temperatures uh, for both the highs and lows during January, February. So this column here, this column here. Also notice um, the upper ones are from, upper cities are in Canada, lower ones are in Europe. Notice the latitudes here, guys. Um, make sure you answer these questions over on the right-hand side. Uh, again, pause, rewind, do whatever you need to do so you can see all the information you need to. So pause the video, do that. So remember, the higher the latitude, the cooler the climate. We've talked about that, you know that. So you would expect the higher latitude locations to be cooler but however, the European cities, which are at slightly higher latitudes, are actually warmer than the Canadian cities, which are at lower latitudes. Absolute craziness. <laughs> well, the reason starts in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, so as you can see in the diagram, we have these warm ocean waters in the Gulf of Mexico. 
uh, and that warm water is constantly being moved or pushed um, across the Atlantic Ocean up into Europe, warming those cities throughout the entire year. So even though the European cities are at a slightly higher latitude, closer to the poles, you'd expect them to be colder, they're actually warmer due to this heat source now. It's not a sink, this is a heat source um, from the Gulf of Mexico. All right, last one. The last current we're going to discuss is the granddaddy of them all, the Antarctic current. Uh, this current moves the most amount of water out of any of the surface currents that we're ever going to talk about and really could have the biggest impact not only on the climate of Antarctica, but the entire globe. I'm going to give you an example shortly. So this current goes from west to east, circumnavigating Antarctica, and what it does is it keeps the continent in a deep freeze. But here's the crazy thing, though. Uh, this current hasn't always been here. Um, you know, we've talked about Pangaea breaking up, um, and before all of the continents broke up, the southern tip of South America, right here, and this peninsula that kind of comes off of Antarct uh, Antarctica right here, were actually connected. It should be easy to see that. Um, and when they were connected, the Antarctic current did not exist. That water would, you know, either come down this way and go all the way around, or it would come the other way. Um, and that actually kept Antarctica re relatively warm. I mean, there were nice plants and animals living on this big, huge continent. However, once uh, this separated, South America, Antarctica, the Antarctic current could begin to formulate and that sent Antarctica into the deep freeze. So, I mean, if, if for any reason in the future Antarctica would reconnect with some continent, the Antarctic current would stop. All that ice on Antar Antarctica could potentially melt, and then the entire global climate would definitely change. So, that's it for this video. Uh, we're going to get into deep ocean currents next.